Hello everybody, this is SoyaChinchow.com and today we're going to have a hands-on with the BlackBerry Z10, a full touchscreen device that's running on the latest BlackBerry 10 operating system. So let's get right into it. So in the front here, you get a 4.2 inch display that does a resolution of 1280 by 768 and it pushes a rather high density of 355 ppi. In terms of a, of a processor, it comes with a dual-core 1.5 gigahertz uh, Qualcomm S4 processor which is mated with 2 gigs of RAM and on board it comes with 16 gig of storage and you can expand it with micro SD. So in the back here it feels quite good in the hands, uh, it has this rubberized texture feel. It feels like holding a wallet or a leather belt. So let's just open that cover to, to have a peek inside. So over here is the 1800 mAh battery. I'm not sure you can see that. And you'll notice, you'll notice that it uses micro, uh, micro SIM slot. And, it come, and this is the uh, micro SD memory card for expansion. And over the back here, it also comes with NFC. So there's this uh, NFC panel over here, which is connected with these connector points. Let's put that back on. In terms of imaging, it comes with an 8 megapixel camera with assisted flash. And over the front, it comes with a 2 megapixel camera. And the top here, you have the power button right smack in the middle. And the headphone jack over here. On the right side, you have the volume rocker, the middle buttons to activate a uh, voice command, and on the left side, you have the HDMI and uh, micro USB port, which is open just like this. Um, they could have saved space if they combined this as a single micro USB port, considering most of the devices today are using MHL protocol. Uh, you notice in the front is actually very clean. There's no um, capacity buttons and you can actually switch on the device by just flicking it from the BlackBerry logo upwards, just like this. So you don't need to press the button, so you just swipe it up like this. Since the device um, lacks any capacity buttons, it uses a lot of gestures. So you want to rotate between uh, application for multitasking, you just need to swipe up like this, and it shows all the running apps. So this is how you switch around. Pretty seamless with just one, one finger. And you notice that when you swipe upwards, you see there's these icons on the left side here. So that indicates um, the notification that requires your attention. So all the notification, text messages, um, call history, and updates from uh, Twitter or Facebook is actually located in what they call the BlackBerry Hub. So that's like a unified inbox. So to access it immediately, you just need to swipe up and flip to the right. So this is the BlackBerry Hub. So you can see all the notifications here. So you can have it combined. Or you can actually uh, view specifically such as BBM or Gmail or Twitter. So everything is stored here in the BlackBerry Hub. So in terms of screen panels, so what you have here is that on the left side houses the BlackBerry Hub. The, mid the second pane actually houses the multitasking applications and the rest on the right is all your installed applications. In terms of native apps, um, it's quite limited at the moment, but you do have your essential stuff such as Facebook and Twitter. Um, unfortunately, you can't install multiple accounts right now. For Instagram fans, well, bad news is that there isn't a native app. However, you can sideload it from, uh, uh, from Android. So you can see here we have Instagram loaded. It's, a, it's not straightforward. There's a bit of trickery involved if you want to install um, Instagram. And notice that it still carries a lot of... Uh, Android features. So even the gallery, you notice that this is actually from an Android. Even the camera as well. Let's load it up. Since it's not a native app, um, it feels a bit sluggish, but it still works. And to go back, since there's no back button on the BlackBerry, is to swipe from the bottom right towards the left, like that. So that's how you switch. To kill it, just hit the X on top. All right. So this is how gestures work. Oh, another gesture is if, to access the menu options, you start from the top. So you, this brings down the toggles like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and uh, it actually depends on the application. So home screen, this brings up these, you know, these uh, options. So you can actually have rotation lock here as well. In terms of um, waking up when it's asleep, this is actually quite cool. However, um, from my experience, we did encounter a few times where, that, where we accidentally unlock it in our pocket. So that can be quite annoying. A uh, good thing is that uh, BlackBerry gives you an option to disable that. So you just go to settings, hit display, and you just disable allow gestures when locked. So that disables that function. 
So to enable, to wake up the device, you need to press the button at the top. So there you have it. Let's move on to the browser. So the browser here is actually quite straightforward. It supports uh, multiple tabs. Uh, one thing we didn't like is that um, it doesn't reflow the text. So we zoom in like this. It doesn't reflow. So you, so you end up scrolling left and right a lot. We wonder why BlackBerry doesn't introduce, doesn't uh, offer reflow into this. So the only way to read it comfortably is to enable um, reader mode. So you can enable it by pressing here and reader. So from here you can actually adjust the text. So this fits into the screen. And you're so surprised that BlackBerry doesn't offer pinch and zoom in the reader mode. So you have to do it manually by tapping the enlarge and minimize um, keys at the bottom here. In terms of text, um, it looks pretty sharp on the BlackBerry Z10. It's just a pity that um, the browser lacks reflow. And it's quite annoying, but still okay. All right, so moving on next is the keyboard. So let's just demonstrate that. So let's launch Twitter. So the keyboard has this uh, predictive text input. So when you're typing a message, it will try to predict your next possible word. So if the next word that you're likely to type appears, so you just need to swipe out. So for example, I type this. So it predicts that I might be typing a message or email. So if let's say this is my desired word, I just need to flick it upwards like this. So there you have it. So just flick it up. And if you want to switch between symbols, let's say for example, I want to type 5 o'clock. So typically you need to hit this symbol or numeric button, but you just need to swipe it in the middle here, swipe downwards to, to change the keyboard for one specific input. So you can do that, 5, there you have it. Just swipe it downwards to change the keys. And to hide the keyboard, just press and hold the space bar. Bring it back up, just hit the text input. So just, just a quick demo on the keyboard. All right. So in terms of camera, it's actually pretty cool. Um, it's pretty decent as well. So when you take a picture, it takes a while to for it to focus. Probably need to wait about one and a half second. And after taking a picture, you can preview it by just uh, holding and dragging the thumbnail, like that. Um, and apart from that, there's this uh, time shift feature. So let's say you're taking a group shot or portrait picture. Um, what it does is when you take a picture, it takes several shots. And then you can actually um, sh uh, time shift across. So for example, if you take a picture while someone is closing their eyes, you can actually shift a few seconds for that perfect shot. And one big complaint about the camera is that um, if you're doing something else, the camera is not always ready to take the next picture. So for example, from the camera view, let's just bring it to the standard camera view over here. If let's say I'm viewing a picture in this mode and I just leave, leave it as it is, the camera is not ready to take a picture. That is the last state. So for example, if I want to take a picture, if I see something that's going on and I want to take a picture immediately, it launches exactly the last state. See, it's not ready to take a picture. So what that means is that um, if, wanna, if after doing your sharing or viewing of pictures, you've got to close the camera app properly. You must return to this camera state. Um, you, we don't know why BlackBerry is doing this. Uh, hopefully they will fix this issue because it's quite annoying that your camera is not ready and each time you want to take a picture, it ends up showing um, a, a photo or a, or a sharing stage. So to, to, clean it, to, to ensure that it's ready, we advise to close the camera app each time you do it do anything with the camera app. In terms of BlackBerry uh, Messenger, um, interestingly, it, it supports that without the need of subscribing BIS. So you can just use any data plan and you're ready to send a BBM. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, also, for those who watch YouTube a lot, um, you see there's a YouTube um, icon over here, but in fact, it's just a link to the browser. So it goes to m.youtube.com. Um, hopefully, they will come up with a native app soon especially um, we prefer the native app instead all right so that's just a quick look at the blackberry z10 if you have any questions drop them down below thanks for the likes thanks for the comments and thank you for watching this is soyachinchai.com see you guys later